Welcome to the Capital Discussions Roundtable. I'm Tom Nonemaker with our guest, uh, Mike, from Power Options. But before we get started, a quick disclaimer, the Capital Discussions is not a broker-dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. Sorry about that. Big uh, thunder outside. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. So with that out of the way and the thunder has stopped, I will uh, transfer the presenter over to you, Mike. And uh, this is your first time on the round table, so welcome. And uh, maybe give folks a little quick intro and uh, what, who you are and what you do. Okay, hold on one second here. I'll make sure. And to share your screen, yeah, you can go uh, Control Alt D, like desktop, on your Windows computer. And that should okay. Be it. Huh? Did that that didn't work, did it? I see. Sorry, um, folks. If you're in the WebEx Event Center, you go to Quick Start. There should be a uh, button to share your screen. Or you can go on the the WebEx menu structures to the share. All right, there it goes. Yeah, I don't know why there the uh, Control Alt D wasn't working there, so uh, I apologize for that. So you're seeing my uh, screen now just has Power Options Basic Walkthrough, the Power Options Tools, June 8, 2016. I do. It's great. Looks good. Okay, great. Well, the first thing we want to do, folks, thank you for uh, letting me um, speak here today with Capital Discussions. Tom, thank you for reaching out to us, and uh, thank you all for joining the presentation. Um, Power Options is essentially a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors. Ernie Zarenner created the Power Options tools back in 1997. He essentially retired from Hewlett Packard, and him and his uh, friend who was a programmer who retired as well created a set of tools so Ernie could uh, simply have a place where he could enter in his own trades, search for his own trades that he wanted, rather than spending time going to the library, looking through newspapers and finding stocks that he liked and realizing they weren't optionable and couldn't do the positions he wanted. Well, he put it up on the net for some of his friends at uh, HP to continue to use, and over time, other investors found it, and Ernie decided that he would make it more of a lucrative business. Now, of course, when he originally started, he put in the strategies that he was using, covered calls, uh, long calls, and some naked put positions. We've expanded the tools over the last 19 years. There's a patented search tool, the uh, search tool algorithms that we use are actually patented, and that's now available for over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. But as Tom and I were discussing earlier, right now we don't have a search analysis screen for uh, broken wing butterflies as of yet. Um, we might have some tools available working with uh, Capital Discussions Group and others uh, coming up for that kind of uh, access as well. Uh, now, as Tom mentioned, my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. Uh, I've worked with Ernie and the Power Options staff since about 2001, 2002, so for about 14, 15 years now. Um, I have co-authored two books on investing. I've presented in various places across the country, Atlanta, um, uh, of course, Chicago, several times Texas, and uh, different trading groups as well in South Carolina and North Carolina as well. Now, as I mentioned, of course, the reason these tools were created, because as options investors, we know that we need multiple services. We need a service that can identify the combinations of strikes and expiration dates that match our trading plan and can make or break a trade. But just important is the option configuration is going to be the underlying security. We know we're not going to waste time trying to open a bullish position on a bearish stock unless we have some type of alternative management set up. Uh, many of the services offer a stock screener, but then a separate options matrix where you can just plug in the stock and view the spreads. We, of course, offer those two as well, but it's much easier to be able to screen for just the positions you want to match all of your criteria at once as opposed to going to different places. Of course, proper management is also the key to success. Um, earlier, I think one of the attendees, I think it was Gregory again, had mentioned about how he's working with the broken wing butterflies, and I believe he's comfortable with managing in one direction or not the other. And so you need tools to be able to manage the various positions as well. So 
why power options exist and what our tools are designed to do in addition to the education that we offer. We like to have these tools available because it gives the investor the ability to select the options in a given strategy to match your goals and tolerance. The screening for the price, return, probability, volatility, Greeks, and liquidity. And in any strategy, you can also search specifically for stock fundamentals and stock technicals that you would use to identify the security for that particular strategy. Of course, once you identify the positions, you will then be able to further research and analyze those positions, the stock or the option before entering the trade. And then, of course, we offer a powerful set of portfolio tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage the positions. All right, so that's essentially what Power Options is. I apologize there. I'm going to navigate over here uh, to the main screen of Power Options. And what we're looking at here is your basic uh, trial account. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you real quick, Tom, do you see the, uh, like the, the blue, I'm sorry, box at the top of my screen as well that says I'm sharing the monitor? Is that just for me? I just want to verify that. Uh, that's just for you. Okay. Yep. All right. Fantastic. Well, so the basic power option screen, our tools are designed by strategy. Uh, so we see we have some of the basics here set up for covered call. And just in each tool, each strategy, I should say, you'll have a variety of tools. We've selected a picks of the day for covered calls, naked puts, and upcoming credit spreads. We show the top three based on historical searches that we've done. Uh, the option chain we'll talk about in a little bit. Of course, every service has an options chain, but ours is a little bit more customizable than most. The search tool, we're going to spend time on that today. And, of course, you can always search by symbol in every strategy as well. I'm going to quickly go to the Other Strategies tab here just to show all of the available strategies. So I've selected about seven or eight, uh, the common strategies, straddles, strangles, bull put credits. But over here on the left, you see all of the available strategies, uh, the different vertical spreads, of course, calendar calls, calendar puts, uh, covered combinations, um, iron butterflies, iron condors, long calls, long puts, and so forth. Uh, we had a gentleman uh, who came in earlier who had mentioned that he had found power options through the radioactive trading concepts, the married put techniques uh, developed by Kurt Frankenberg, who we're actually partnered with right now for limited risk positions and applying the different income methods as well. Now, I'm going to go into bull puts. Uh, the reason why I'm going to do that, Tom, is I saw that uh, when you did the survey, and many investors say that they were beginning or a little bit more experienced. Of course, many are doing the, the pattern trades that you're doing. I shouldn't say pattern trades, but those broken wing butterflies. Uh, but rather than start with just covered calls and naked puts, I wanted to show some of the tools for evaluating credit spreads simply, or maybe even iron condors. So on power options, if I'm interested in opening a particular bull put credit spread, or I want to identify bull put credit spreads that match my criteria, we'll start off in the search tool. When you click on the search tool in any strategy, you're going to see a list of potential trades. And these trades match either your last safe search or most likely the default criteria that we have available. And for every strategy, we offer default criteria that you can use as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. For this particular one, we're looking at the weekly bull put screen. And you see a brief description here, the selection is to find bull puts and weekly options. And we've actually tested different criteria to find which one worked best, which set of criteria would work best consistently over the course of the last six or seven years as well. Now, when you scroll down below the list of trades in a given strategy on power options, you'll be able to see the actual criteria that were used, and you can make any adjustments to those criteria as well. So we start off with our four basic tabs here, our options criteria, the stock technicals, stock fundamentals, and the lists as well. And let me see here. I'm just going to make sure if I can change something. There we go. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, folks. Okay. I just wanted to do that there. All right. So, sorry, for the options, in any strategy, you can select the time frame, whether we want to look for a standard expiration or whether we want to look for uh, weekly options, for example, or any given time frame. Uh, you had mentioned with the broken wing butterflies, of course, that you might look for up to 60 to 70 to 90 days out in time. Well, I could easily set a time frame 
uh, for look for all expiration cycles between 65 and 90 days out in time as well. Um, so that's something that's always available there uh, for us to use. In every strategy, you'll be able to screen by implied volatility, whether you want to screen by the sell option, the buy option, the implied volatility ratio. There's also the availability to screen by the percent implied volatility range in most strategies, and that shows you where is the option's implied volatility now compared to where it has been over the life of the option. So if I'm looking to sell premium in a given strategy, I might look for a higher percent implied volatility range on the options I'm selling and try to look for a lower implied volatility range on the options that I'm buying. A basic risk return, of course, we can set the maximum risk for the spread itself, monetarily or percentage-wise, and of course the net credit and the percentage return. Ranges in or out of the money in each strategy, and then of course the other option criteria, including things such as the theoretical probability above, the short option in this case of a bull put credit spread, uh, the delta of the short option or the long option, the delta ratio between, and if you wanted to limit positions that you're buying or selling by bid-ask spread. You want to look for a smaller bid-ask spread or percentage bid-ask spread. That's available in all strategies as well. Of course, we can also adjust the volume and the liquidity for the positions. Now, in any the different strategies, these will change. For example, we talked briefly about the married puts. Well, I wouldn't see a net credit filter or a percent return in a married put or a long call or a long put because essentially the upside profit is unlimited but we could define it by the percent or monetary maximum risk we wanted to see across the universe of options or other factors as well, depending on the strategy. If I'm doing the calendar spreads, I could set requirements for the time frame for my short and my long leg, as well as setting a minimum price for the premium I want to receive on the short and a maximum price I want to pay for the long. So the idea here is to cut down the entire universe of options uh, based on what you're looking to accomplish in your particular strategy as well. In every strategy, the technicals that we can use, things such as beta, the percent of 52-week range, volume and percentage stock volume, broker recommendation, we get into a little bit more detail with things such as the Bollinger Band ranges and the Bollinger Band ratios. Those of you who use Bollinger Bands, we could screen specifically for stocks that are up near the upper range of their Bollinger Band or have even broken through the upper band or the lower band as well. Those of you who might be trading the iron condors or neutral strategies, you could use a bandwidth range, that's the envelope size of the Bollinger Bands themselves. So if I restricted this to be between, let's say, 40 and 60, I'm looking for stocks that have been condensed on the Bollinger Bands and have been trading in a tighter range. Now, that might be counterintuitive at some points, because a lot of times when we see stocks contract and the Bollinger Bands close in, we're expecting a breakout one direction or the other. But again, a lot of times, an extended condensed Bollinger Band width will allow us to look for positions that, of course, are trading within a strict range, which would be good for neutral strategies. Simple moving average fields, we can screen for stocks that are trading above a 20 or 50 or 100, or, of course, if the 50 is above the 100 or below. And we can also screen for the number of days the stock has crossed a 20-day, 50-day, or 100-day moving average. And of course, those of you who are using MACD, we see here that one of the defaults that we found with the historical testing is looking for weekly bull puts where the MACD line has been above the signal line for at least three days or more. Now, for the basic fundamentals that you'd have in every strategy, for those of us doing spreads and things of that nature, we may not necessarily want to limit the stock price. But for my bull put spreads, I probably don't want to look for bull puts on stocks that are maybe under $30 or under $20 per share, maybe even under $50 per share. So I might specifically look for stocks that are trading greater than $100. And then the standard other fundamentals, the earnings per share growth, P-E ratio, PEG ratio as well. If you wanted to screen specifically for stocks that pay a dividend, for those of you doing covered calls, married puts, or other long strategies, market cap, uh, net tangible assets as well, and price to book. And then, of course, one of the other important features for screening in any of the strategies is to screen specifically for earnings dates between now and expiration or not between now and expiration or ex-dividend dates, depending on your strategy. The last set of filters that you'll see in each strategy is, of course, the lists field. 
And in the list field, you can choose to screen specifically against given sectors or industries or exclude them. And at the same time, you can choose to include any stock list that you want as well. We start off with the defaults here for things such as uh, ETFs, Dow 30, IBD, various uh, standard and pours lists that you can screen against, uh, as well as value line lists. But you can always create your own personal list. So if you just wanted to screen against the 20 or 30 or 40 stocks that you found maybe from another service, I have a lot of customers who use VectorVest. And they get the stock list from VectorVest, and they'll put it into the create their own personal list from what they found and use that as their base criteria when screening. Now, once you set your criteria, of course, you see the list of results up at the top of the page, and you have a various just basic view right now. So for our bold puts, we've got our company name, the stock symbol, the last price of the stock, uh, the option that we could sell. Here we see the June 98 and a half, nine days to expiration on WYNN for $1.11. And we could buy the June 97 and a half, so we have a dollar strike at 89 cents. So our total net credit would be 22 cents with a percent return of 28.2%. And of course, we're showing the probability as well. On any of the search tools in any of the strategies, or the search by symbol tool or the option chain, you're going to be able to customize the data view based on what you want to see. So I can simply click Choose Columns. And this gives me a list, all of the criteria that I can use to search for stock fundamentals, technicals, and the options criteria, we can select to view on the results page. So if I wanted to add in the other stock criteria, I wanted to add in things such as the option delta, or the short option and long option volume individually, uh, percent to break even ranges, range out of the money, we just select what we want, and then we can make that change to the window. And then our new columns will be added to help us with our research and analysis. Now, we do have a list here of about 72 possible results, 67 results after that uh, recent update just went through. Let me refresh the page here. A lot of times when I'm running a search in any strategy, I want to narrow down the universe of options to maybe only those 10 or 15 positions that best suit my needs. Ernie designed these tools. Of course, there's as we mentioned, about 30 to 40 different option criteria we can use in any strategy, and about 20 to 30 different stock criteria that we can use for every given strategy as well. I mean, we don't want to use every particular criteria that's listed. If I put something into each one of these boxes, I'd likely have no results. But it's designed that if I have investors that are looking specifically for bull put credit spreads based on technical data, and I have customers that are looking for bull put credit spreads specifically based on a course they took where they're only looking for positions that have a delta of, let's say, 0.3 or less on the short option and a minimum return of at least 15%. This tool allows you that wide flexibility where I could go to the floor at CBOE, grab 50 options investors, put them in front of 50 screens, and tell them, create for me your best iron condor search. And I get 50 different searches that match each individual investor. And that's what these tools are designed to do. Now, although it may look a little bit overwhelming at first with all the criteria for a particular strategy, the key really is to put in just those criteria that you use as a starting point. So when I start off in any strategy, once I scroll down below the listed trades, I can go ahead and hit clear filters. That will empty everything out. And we're just going to create a basic search for options that might be about 10 to 15 days out. So again, I could just go to June standard expiration, which is 10 days away. But I'm going to select all months, and we're going to put in a range of, let's say, at least one day to 15. So we'll see anything that expires coming up on Friday, as well as anything that expires on June 10th that matches my criteria. We're going to look for a minimum credit on this bull put of at least 35 cents. And we want that return to be a good leverage return, so we're going to look for at least a 9% yield on the position. The out of the money range, well, I can use out of the money if I specifically wanted to look for the short put to be at least 2 or 3% out of the money, but we can also use the probability. I am going to put 2% out of the money, but going down into our price strike price fields, I'm also going to look for a probability of at least 80% or higher that the stock would remain above the short put. And I'm not going to want to mess around just for specific reasons. I'm not going to want to look at 
uh, spreads that are $1, I'm going to look for at least spreads that are greater than or equal to $2. And of course, I'll want some basic liquidity. So let's look for at least five contracts traded today and at least an open interest of 10 contracts as well. Now we're looking at a bull put spread. This is just very simple, the four or five criteria we look for on a particular spread. But let's go into the underlying. And without getting too complicated, I'm going to look for stocks that have an average stock volume of at least 750,000 shares per day. And this particular field is measured in thousands, and any time you can hover over the basic listings there on the filters to get a definition and some insight of what criteria you might want to use. Again, we're just going to use that simple filter for looking for stocks trading above the SMA 20. And I'm going to keep the default rule there of looking for stocks where the MACD has been above the signal line for the past three days or more. Now for fundamentals, I'm just going to put in a basic view again. We're looking for stocks greater than $50 per share. And since this is a bullish strategy, I'm going to look for stocks that have shown good management over the last year and have grown in earnings at least 5%. I'm going to put in a relative P.E. ratio of, let's say, 0 to 50, so that's not too wide apart. In addition to that, I'm going to avoid stocks that have an earnings between now and expiration. And as before, if I just wanted to look at standard securities, I'm going to go ahead and select to exclude indexes and ETFs for the time being. Or I could choose to screen specifically against indexes and ETFs. Now, just with that six or seven criteria entered, let's go ahead and submit the search. And we see here now that with just that basic criteria of looking for a good net credit, relative percent return, a good probability, and then putting in some basic bullish criteria, we've narrowed down the entire universe of options. And every 15 to 20 minutes, we're building close to about 900,000 to a million bull puts or bear call credit spreads. We've narrowed it down to four positions that match my specific criteria. Now, I'm not saying that these are recommended trades. We just wanted to show you how quick it is and easy it is to set the criteria you want, and the tool is designed to be a time saver. So rather than look across dozens of spreads that may or may not match my criteria, I know exactly now why these four came up in my results, and now we can quickly compare the different positions. So once I get the strategies listed that match my criteria, we'll use the More Information button. We could look at the stock chart. I always want to look at the recent news and headlines to see if there's anything that might cause me hesitation to enter the position. We can do further research on the stock or the option. I'm just going to click on the short put research very quickly. One of the features that we have here on our research tools for the option, we show all the pending data. But down below, you also have the history of this option since it was released on the market. So you can compare graphically option price versus implied volatility, uh, Black-Scholes ratios, option volume, bid, ask, delta as well. So you can see the graphical changes of the option based on the stock change or implied volatility as well. So you can always see the historical prices of the option as well as the historical implied volatility. And that's how, of course, we have that filter available where we can look for the percent implied volatility range. Of course, other things we may want to look at is just your basic profit and loss chart. So you can evaluate the position, see if the graph matches your specific risk-reward tolerance. And you can also run what-if scenarios here for changes in the price. What would happen in this bull put spread if Google fell to $730 in the next three to four days, let's say? What might my position look like? Or if the volatility changed as well. Current volatility for these options is around 0.167. So if my volatility changed to 0.2 and the stock dropped to 730, well, now we can see the new profit and loss chart, the curve line at the halfway point. And, of course, we end up seeing that we might have a loss in this position based on the increase in volatility and the fall in the price on what we'd expect to change for our short option and the long put option as well. Now, the profit and loss chart does link us to the custom spread tool where you can build spreads on the fly. So if I change this here to maybe sell two contracts, of course, of the 725 put and buy one of the 717 for the June 17th expiration, we can go into the View Options field, nine days away there. And let's say that now I went ahead and add a further 
in the money or out of the money put here to create a different position. So we're about uh, seven and a half strikes apart. So let me just go ahead and uh, go for a cheap put here at the 700. Well, we can sort of build different combinations on the fly if we wanted extra protection. Now, I don't think this is the kind of position many of us would look for. It doesn't give us the advantage we're looking for. We probably adjust that a little bit different. But you can add customization to the potential position you found on the fly if you wanted to add a little bit more protection or maybe increase a little bit of premium by creating a ratio spread or doing other legs of a spread to create a combined position as well. Now, one of the last features here, we've talked about how we can quickly identify positions that match our criteria. One of the advantages of, for self-directed investors of using the Power Options tools over just a stock picking or a covered call picking service or things of that nature is we know specifically why these results came up. We have control as an individual investor over the criteria we use, what we're comfortable with, and what matches our trading plan going forward as well. Now, after I've run my analysis, didn't see anything that would cause me hesitation to enter this given position, the last thing that we'll do is go ahead and add it to the portfolio. The portfolio features on power options allow us to track and manage our positions. Just gonna put this in for a quick example. If I open this uh, bull put credit spread on Google, let's say we did five contracts, and we put a commission fee of, let's say, $5.95 for both legs. All right, let's just go ahead and submit that. Now, once you create a portfolio, you'll be able to track, let me go to the standard view there, folks, you'll be able to track your various positions. And we link them together by strategy. So rather than having them as separate legs uh, thrown into a different portfolio, we see we have one covered call open, we now have two bull put credit spreads, one on Texas Instruments, one on Google, one calendar spread, and of course, one iron condor. In the four legs of the iron condor there, we see that we can, uh, you have a summary here, the subtotal of the iron condor or the iron butterfly for the four different legs. Now this is just the standard view, which shows you the gain and loss of each individual leg for the particular strategy. Other views in the portfolio, which are very helpful to position analysis, of course. When I click on position analysis, it adds these six extra criteria over here on the side. And so now I can see the position as a whole. So for the Google position that was just opened, we received a credit of 413. And due to bid ask slippage, if we liquidated right now, it'd be of a loss of $124 to close the leg. But the position we open on Texas Instruments that expires in two days, we received a net credit of 520 for 10 contracts, and we could liquidate the position right now for only a cost of 480. And so we could make 92% on that bull put credit spread, and that might be a good time right now to potentially close the position. Um, I'm sorry, I just had a chat come through. I, I didn't see, there might have been more questions. I'm sorry there, oh, sorry. Okay, uh, two questions yeah, came in. I'm sorry, folks, I didn't see them. But uh, I was going to show one other thing real quick, but uh, from Andrej says that please explain how the historical volatility is calculated. The screener itself, the historical volatility for the stock is based on the 50-day volatility. Um, we do show the values when you're in the stock research tool, the 20-day, 50-day, 100, and 250 historical volatility. But in the screen itself, it's based on the 50-day volatility for the underlying stocks. Um, and as Steve said, uh, are there any risk management type of features for the strategies? The premium seller, I'm constantly having to make adjustments when the underlying moves against my position. So that's perfect lead into what I wanted to show next here. Um, very quickly, though, before I do that, no, oh, sorry, wrong button there. Uh, we, before we do that, get into the field there. There we go. The other views that we offer here on the portfolio, as you're tracking multi-leg positions, which may be important, is the Greeks view. So when I click on the Greeks view, I see the combined, based on the number of contracts in each position, the summary of the delta, gamma, theta, uh, vega, of course, and the implied volatility ranges. So if you're a, a delta neutral trader, a gamma neutral trader, for example, in the portfolio view, you'll be able to see your combined portfolio average weighted delta and uh, gamma, of course, and theta, and you could make adjustments based on that as well. And as I'm tracking the positions in the portfolio, we also have the important dates field. Uh, so the important dates will show you the earnings coming up for any position, 
dividend date and last dividend date, uh, and then some other basic information as well. But going back to the question that came in about management, anytime I enter in a position to the portfolio, whether it's a simple covered call, whether it's a married put even, whether it's a condor or a bull put credit spread, we're going to set alerts in the portfolio. And for any given strategy, you'll be able to set alerts on the underlying security. If the stock moves below a certain price or decreases by a certain percentage or increases, and you'll be able to set alerts for each individual leg as well. So for my short call here for the covered call position, if the option changed by a certain value or increased in my favor, if I'm within one to two days to expiration, of course, I could set alerts based on that. If the total position, whether it's a credit spread, a condor, has decreased by a certain percentage or increased by a certain percentage, we can set that. And as we mentioned, in our search, we had looked for bull puts where the stock was you know, above the 20-day moving average, or I might have used a Bollinger Band screen. So I can set alerts to be notified if the stock changes direction and drops below the 20 or the 50-day based on the original criteria I used, or if I'm within three days to earnings or three days to ex-dividend and might want to manage the position. Now I can save those alerts, of course, and as we saw in the footlocker position, we'll be notified when an alert is triggered. Subscribers to the Power Options services will also be able to have those alerts emailed to them when they're triggered. But one of the most powerful features of the portfolio tool, whether I'm tracking just covered calls or elaborate spreads, for example, as I'm tracking those positions, I can go into the position actions menu where we quickly do any of the adjustments, add a dividend, roll the leg, close the leg, and so forth. But we can go to a position analysis page. And when we're looking at the position, oh, sorry, folks. When we're looking at the position analysis page, we get a breakdown of our current position profit and loss chart we expected, some criteria based on our remaining delta on the option, the time value left, our days to expiration. As we scroll down below, we see the basics of what was our original position value. What is my current liquidation for this footlocker position? Well, I'm down 2.4% after 20 days on the covered call. And if I held it for the remaining nine days, I'd still have a loss of 1.8% if the stock stayed at the same price. But as you scroll down below the position, we're at a loss right now of 2.4 and might expect a loss of minus 1.8. But as we scroll down below, in all strategies, you'll see potential rollout opportunities and adjustments where we're doing the math for you. So we're showing that we could currently buy back our June 57.5 call in Foot Locker for 25 cents, and we could go to the July 52.5 call, the 15th of July, for a premium of 360, but that still puts me at a negative percent if assigned. So if I want to try to trade, change this losing trade into a winner, I might look further out to August, but the July 55 call here offers a smaller premium, but with a potential of a 0.5% gain. So if I feel the stock's going to stay around this price, I'd still have a good downside protection of 7%, and instead of taking a loss of 2.4% liquidating now, or 1.8%, I might have a small gain in 37 days by rolling down to the July 55. And it's great to see things numerically, but what's better is to see it graphically. So as I'm evaluating my rollout opportunities in any position, go to Simulate Trade, we see sort of a side-by-side -side comparison of where we are right now, my current position on the left in red, and my new position on the right in blue, where we see that rolling down now would lower our cost basis down to 56.60 and 54.80 total after the premium received. So if the stock does stay above 55 now, we could, of course, uh, increase the return there and change a losing position into a winning one over the next 37 days. Is this potentially the best adjustment? No, but it does showcase that the rollout opportunities there help you more quickly analyze potential adjustments on the position. We're doing all the heavy lifting for you, and if I decided I wanted to make this adjustment, simply click Submit Change to Portfolio down at the bottom, now we still have the foot locker position, but the original price at 6060 has been lowered to 5676 after rolling the call, and we see the new combined July 55 call that we just sold for $1.85. So that's taken into account. We can always view the uh, full run there. If I go to analysis, we can see the full position on foot locker that we've traded uh, over time with various puts. Now, that's just a walkthrough of what I do on a daily basis when I'm opening new positions, adjusting criteria, 
using the default searches as a stepping stone to make the adjustments I want to see, and then researching and analyzing the positions using the quick tools there on the side, run what-if scenarios with the profit and loss chart, and then put them in the portfolio. Now, a question came in uh, earlier about position protection. In many of the individual strategies, you'll have various things that you can use to help protect a position, hedge a position, or uh, increase uh, potential returns as well. I'm sorry, let me go back there uh, real quick here just to the home menu. So uh, one of the main features, one of the tools that we offer here is called the stock repair tool. So if you have a covered call right now or maybe you have a stock, and I'll use Foot Locker again as an example, and I'll go to the stock repair tool. So if my cost per share was actually, let's say, 59.50, and I had 100 shares, or maybe I lowered it because of a call that I sold, what this tool does is build repairs. Now, Foot Locker is currently at 55.46. I got a cost basis of 59.50. What this tool did is try to build ratio repairs for the position, the stock repair, where I could potentially lower my break even from 59.50 down to 57.15 uh, by doing a ratio call, selling two 57 and halves and buying two 55s. Won't go through the repair details right now, but we can see here as we go to the profit and loss, it would take that losing position I have right now to a potential winner if I expect the stock to recover over time. Didn't address the downside though, if I'm concerned about another fall. So in positions, the protected positions, such as married puts and collars, if I click on the insurance tool, we can put in, let's say, our stock symbol again of TXN. When you change the Texas Instruments, let's say I bought the stock at around 6150, and uh, we can go ahead and hit calculate here. It shows me I have an unrealized gain of about 0.8%, and it shows me available puts I could buy with the new potential locked-in profit. Negative locked-in profit shows you the risk. But there's a position here where I could guarantee a profit of 1% and still apply other adjustments to the position. Uh, so the insurance tool will allow you to evaluate put options that you could purchase on your stock or your underlying security, even if you do already have a covered call in place, to show you what your new risk would be. And here we have a negative max risk, so it's a bulletproof position. And then, of course, we can customize adding other positions to it. If we want to simulate maybe selling uh, 63 call, for example, or doing a ratio spread against this position, we can evaluate that as well on the fly to see what our new risk-reward profile would be for this particular position with the uh, risk limited now, eh, return not as high as I'd like there, but the custom spread tool, the profit and loss chart will allow you to do that on the fly as well. Now, another tool, two other tools real quick I'm going to review here that are independent uh, to the strategies themselves. A uh, powerful tool that we have for those of you who might be speculating with long calls or long puts and part of your portfolio is the long option finder. And what this tool simply allows us to do is let's say that we were looking earlier at uh, Alphabet or Google. So if I type in G-O-O-G-L, which was currently trading, I believe, in around 740. And if I put an expected price for the stock of 795, and I'm going to invest about maybe $3,000 into expensive options on Google, and I expect this new target to hit by the end of June, for example, and bullish over the next uh, 20 days or so. We'll just put that into the long option finder. And that brief instant, what this long option finder did is grabbed every available call for this particular stock, and it calculated every possible strike to see what the potential return would be based on what the current price of the options is right now. Okay, so we see here that the July 780 call, July 1, I'm sorry, 780 call, priced at 120. With my investment of 3,000, I could buy 24 contracts. And if the stock did hit my expected price on my expected target date, this option would theoretically be worth 1502, which makes sense. It's right at about intrinsic value. So we'd have about 11,000 uh, or 1,000% 1, return from $1.20 to 1502. Now, it's expecting a large move, I understand that, but that's what this tool allows you to do. The long option finder allows you to do is plug in your values for your expectation of the stock and quickly see which options would yield you the best theoretical return on the position. And of course, one of the, for those of you changing, trading spreads, we do offer the spread chain tool. And this tool is a simple tool to use by stock symbol. So if I was interested in trading bull spreads on Amazon, 
I could look straight at credit spreads where it would show me the bear calls and the bull put combinations. Or I could go to the put credit and call debit parity. I'm going to type in Amazon and we're going to put in some basic criteria that we want to spread width of let's say at least 10, uh, spread width of 10, minimum credit of at least 85 cents, percent out of the money, good for 0.5, minimum return, let's again increase that to 9, and a probability of greater than 75%. Okay, now this showed me the default positions, the bull puts and the bull call debits for the June expiration, but let's go to June 17th instead to look for the weeklies. So if I was interested on in opening spreads in Amazon, but I knew I was going to look at a 10-point spread width, I had a minimum net credit requirement, minimum return and probability, the midpoint spread chain tool shows me just those quick combinations for Amazon where I can evaluate the probability versus the return. Um, for each position. Now, why did I choose to look at this call debit, put debit parity? Well, let's say we just went with the highest probability, and we chose the spread here of using the 692.50 and the 7025, selling the 7025 put and buying the 692. Well, the credit spread, the put spread, would give us a 96 cents net credit, which is a 10.6% yield. But the debit on the bull call would be 903 which means we could get an extra cent or an extra percent return. Now, that might not be worth it, but some of these other combinations here, let's look at the 697, 707.5, a 15.5% return for the bull put credit spread with the same probability where I could get a 16.3% return at midpoint potentially for the bull call debit spread. So in this case, my sentiment is the same. I'm still bullish on the position, but the midpoint spread chain allows me to view the parity view between call credit and put debit or put credit and call debit to see which one best matches my probability, my individual requirements for a stock, and can I get a better return with the debit potentially than the credit. And even though I trade bull put credit spreads or bear call credit spreads, I might consider going with the parity trade if it is offering a reasonably higher return on the position. Uh, one other quick thing here I want to share in this tool for those of you maybe doing condors or butterflies, uh, let me just change my criteria again for this uh, particular spread chain tool here. Minimum return, we've got to have at least 9% uh, again. I'll go probability of 75. But if I use the spread chain tool for the credit spreads, where I have my bear calls on the left and my bull puts on the right, this now allows me to quickly create and compare a potential iron condor based on what probability I'd want at midpoint prices. So if I wanted to be at least 82% probability, well, I would have put that into the field here for the probability range. But here I see I could combine the bear call 750, 760 with the bull put 697, 707, and we get a return of 96 cents plus $1.13. So we get about uh, a little bit over a $2 credit on a 10-point spread. So this combination of iron condor, looking at two other money bear calls and bull puts, would probably match my criteria for return about 20% or so uh, based on the premium and the 10-point spread since we only have to cover one side or the other as well. So in each individual strategy, there are uh, individual tools that you can use. The insurance tool, um, we saw there the uh, spread chain tool for bull puts and bear calls, and the long call, of course, the long option finder. So just plug in your stock there and go from there and you can see which calls or which puts would give you the best potential return based on your criteria. Now, before I navigate back over to the slides to briefly show you some other information about power options, uh, I guess I'll open it up if anyone has any questions. In fact, let me just go ahead and do that real quick here um, while I'm on this page. There we go. So. What we wanted to show today is just how do we feel Power Options is used to be a one-stop shop for options investing. You can set up the search in any strategy to find only the trades that match your trading plan and specific criteria for stock and options. In less than a few moments and a few clicks, you can narrow down the entire universe of options to only those positions that match your personal risk reward tolerance. You quickly have links available to further research and analyze the stock or the option, run what-if scenarios, uh, look at uh, recent headlines, and then the portfolio tool to help you for ease of tracking your positions, tracking alerts, and evaluation of adjustments as well. Now, the standard cost of power options, we do offer an end-of-day service, which is only $40 per month. 
The delayed service gives you access to all the tools available, and that's uh, $60 per month. It's about a 15-minute delay. And we do offer a real time, so every time you refresh a page, whether it's your portfolio or you run a search, you're getting the numbers and the calculations at that very instant, uh, and that's $120 per month for the real time service right now. Um, but consideration is that how much would you pay for individually a stock selection service, an options analysis service, market news, or portfolio tools? I know of uh, three or four portfolios, uh, sorry, services out there that offer portfolio tracking tools that are $45 to $85 per month. With Power Options, you get all of those services combined in one for really just under $60 per month, depending on your activity. And of course, Tom, as we had talked, we did set up a specific link uh, for anyone who is interested out of the Capital Discussion Group. If you have not tested out our tools yet or used Power Options, you can use this link, uh, powerop.com uh, slash capital, and that'll take you to the main page, and you can just put in your name and email address, and that'll start you with a 14-day free trial. No other information is needed. You will have full use of the tools for the delayed service, and of course, we're gonna work out uh, specials available for future subscribers of the Capital Discussion Group as well, discounted for uh, group subscriptions and so forth as well going forward. And as Tom and I talked, of course, a little bit earlier, um, we were going to talk about working with uh, one of the members of Capital Discussion who is a subscriber to Power Options and using the Broken Wing Butterflies and continue to talk with Tom as well to see if maybe there's a one-off tool that we can use to help build those positions for you, perhaps, or identify them similar to how we use the search tool for other strategies as well. Well, fantastic. Uh, I did have a couple of questions. Um, do your tools work with indexes? Like the uh, many Absolutely. of our members trade, say the Russell or SDX. Absolutely. So let me go back here to the screen. I'll just go here right now. Earlier, we were in the search for bull puts. Um, or if we went back to the, I saw the spread chain open. Maybe I do. It doesn't look like I do. Um, but let me just go into the search real quick. And one of the things, uh, I'll show you two things here for the bull put credit spread search. There it is. We were shown earlier that we specifically remove the indexes and ETFs from this filter, but I can change that completely and show just indexes and ET oops, sorry, that's not the one I want, indexes and ETFs as well. So let's see with that basic criteria we created on the fly. All right, nothing's there, and it's probably due to the probability. So let me narrow that down to 70. Greater than or equal to two, that's fine. This should work a little bit better. The open interest. Oh, now there's one more thing I have to change, sorry. Anytime you're looking for the indexes or ETFs, you want to clear out uh, some of the basic, especially the stock volume filters as well. There we go. Okay, so yep. that basic criteria, Tom, I was looking for a position, bull puts, 1 in 15 days out, minimum 35 credit, spread width greater than 2, uh, probability of greater than 70. And we have 16 results here for the IBB uh, Biotech ETF, spreads on SPX. Um, yeah, so it's looking at all the indexes as well. RUT, IWM. One thing I've done before, too, is uh, this is on my webinar account, of course. I have, I have ones that, uh, sorry, lists I've created to remove uh, from specific lists. And I also have one just called My Index List. And I'm going to go ahead and do something very quick here. It just shows SPX. Let's clear out the filters one more time. Let's put in that date range. Let's keep a very simple search. Net credit of 50 cents, return of at least five. Uh, spread width, again, I'm going to set there, Tom, greater than or equal to probably five here, and the probability of, let's go, 70. And I selected the list to screen against of just uh, my index list, which is just the main four indexes. We should see uh, RUT, SPX, NDX is in there as well. Now, there's too many results here. There's 140, so I could narrow that down further by doing other criteria. Um, one thing on Power Options, Tom, uh, of course, thank you for bringing it up is that if I'm in that spread chain tool we looked at earlier, when I'm putting in a symbol for an index on power options, you can see our notation is dollar sign SPX, um, dollar sign NDX, and so forth. So I'd have to, if I was doing a search by symbol, I just wanted to look at the chain or the quotes, I'd have to put in the dollar sign SPX. We could go directly to the chain, for example. Um, and of course, uh, one thing I wanted to mention with the chain, just as we saw before, this is just your basic uh, small chain for calls and puts with some of the basic criteria. But as we saw in the search, we can customize the 
call chain, the put chain on power options, or the call and put chain any way you want to through that choose columns filter. So you can add any criteria for the Greeks, uh, return, probability ranges, implied volatility, implied volatility ranges. So anytime you look at a chain, it's customized to the data that you would like to use for your analysis. Hey, speaking of SPX, I know they recently uh, started adding the uh, Wednesday expiring options. Are, are those in your database as well? You see them right here. It threw me off when they first came out. I remembered when they were coming out, but the notification that they released them came actually about three hours after <laughs> they did it. And I went to the chain and I thought, wow, what is this June 9th and June 10th and, and where is this other one? So you see it here, the June 9th expiring tomorrow. They are in the database. And then, of course, we have the June 10th, uh, two days away for Friday's expiration as well. And I'm sorry, you saw the selection there in the drop down. So the 15th and the 17th, all of the Wednesday ones are in there now uh, for SPX, and we believe other indexes are going to be released there as well. Oh, great. Um, uh, more questions from me. Uh, is there, uh, I know we, a lot of us use either Option View or Option at Explorer, and they have nice manual back testing tools. Is there any uh, way to do that with power options? Can you say go back in time and look for spreads or, or uh, you know, different criteria Absolutely. to see what would have been? Absolutely. Let me do one thing real quick here. Uh, sorry, let me get out of this and uh, see a couple other questions from Jerry coming in as well. Um, so this search, oh, that's the weekly bull puts. That's not the one we were playing around with. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, I got out of it already. Let me do one quick thing. Let's go back to our bull put search we just created, uh, Tom. And I'm going to go ahead and save this search now, and we're just going to call it uh, index search for capital discussions. Right? And it's not a recommendation or a suggestion, it's just on the fly. So let me go ahead and save that. I didn't have to say that, but I'm going to save this particular search. In any strategy, we can click on backtest. The backtesting tools will give you three uses. Um, the Smart History Excel, which will allow us to run backtest in any strategy based on our criteria. We could use the search by symbol history to look up index spreads one index at a time going back in the past. And if you're on the subscribe to the historical tools, you'll also have access to the full chain, the full historical chain. We record our own data. It goes back to April of 2006, so over 10 years of backtesting data now. Now, on this particular account, it's just a trial account that we use for our webinars, but all of you on the free trial will still have access to the historical tools, but using two months of historical data. So I'm going to go to bull put, Tom, and let's go back to the end of April. We'll go to April 8th, and we're going to do that. So I'm going to pull up the screen we just created, index search for capital discussions. So now we run the historical search, and it's actually looking for positions that would have matched that criteria as if we'd run the search on April 8th. And we see the top 15 results there for NASDAQ, different SPX, and different RUTs as well. Now, in the historical tools you find your results, there's two things that you can do to analyze the position. I can analyze this position individually. So I decided to go with the NDX one, which has the highest net credit there, or the highest return, I should say, of 21.7%. And if I open this on April 8th for the April 22nd expiration, and click on Analyze Position, and this is going to give me a breakdown and a performance of the position. Uh, the maximum return was realized on this position that expired worthless. And uh, we can see the minimum return was the day, three days after we opened it at 9%. And then we can see the history, of course, of the percentage return on my position versus performance of QQQ and SPX. But down below, we can see the stock last price based on the bid and ask to what our return was historically since we opened the position. Now, that's useful to see the individual position, but if we go back to the back testing, how we use this tool is I create a set of criteria that I'm interested in for calendar spreads, for condors, or as we're looking here, bull puts for indexes. And I went back and I said, okay, so going back in time, I ran this search, here's my top 15 results. How would have these performed over expiration? So we could calculate group results. It does take some time to compile, of course, with the historical tools. But as we see here now, we can see the total view. Oh, screen still, my screen came up here, but it's still not loading yet. One second. So what this does, of course, this is just going to look at every position, the top 15 positions that were on that field, and it's going to show us the total cumulative return at expiration. So what was my win-loss ratio on all of the spreads? 
from when we opened the position on April 8th to the expiration date of the individual options. And then we can also recalculate it to see a specific expiration date. So if I wanted to know what these spreads were worth, uh, their value was five days in or six days in to the trade, we could see that as well. All right, there it goes. So we see here that uh, what we expect sometimes with credit spreads, and we all know this. Now, let's be honest, we wouldn't have opened all these positions. We probably would have opened only one for each individual RUT, SPX, or MDX. But this allows us to compare which were the winners and losers. And we see over that course, the SPX and the NDX spreads would have been successful to 100% of what we expected. But just as any spread trader knows, the win losses get countered out. The RUT spreads all had 100% loss on the position. So even though we were right 80% of the time, we still would have come out of the month with a loss. So that tells me one of two things. Either I have to increase my range out of the money to narrow down the number of positions that I saw back on that original search, or maybe I remove the Russell if it hasn't been a good performing over the last three months. But what I'll do with this tool, Tom, is I'll go ahead, as, as we just mentioned, I'll create a, um, a criteria set for a strategy that I want to test. And then I'll go back in time and start running it month by month by month uh, to see how it would have performed. And as a, if it's not successful, I'll make changes to that criteria based on the market conditions or what I think is working and not working between the strategies until I develop a screening criteria that seems to have worked best over most market conditions. And of course, uh, the question that you might want to ask is, well, did your sample searches and default searches we saw earlier, um, are those tested? And yes, a lot of them are. We see this weekly bull puts that we had for bull puts and same with bear calls. Ernie actually ran historical testing to find the best trade-off for time versus net credit. Again, we're not making specific recommendations or suggestions, but we found that this specific criteria that we use for bull puts performed the best for weekly options. Uh, the most common question I get from a new customer to Power Options who is interested in credit spreads or trading weekly options, they go here and they see the weekly bull put search and they say, well, why are you looking 8 to 17 days out in time? It's because historically we've found that is more successful than trying to force it to every three days or four days out in time because the smaller premium is received in those shorter time frames, so the losses get compounded more dramatically. Uh, very good. I didn't expect that. That's a nice surprise. Um, I did have a, another quick question. I know you have real-time data. Do you have to pay exchange fees with that, or is that all included? If you are a professional, yes. Okay, so the exchanges ask us to, if you subscribe to the real-time data, uh, the exchanges have you fill out the professional versus non-professional. If they judge you a professional based on that 10 uh, questionnaires that they send out, or if you have, a, of course, a, an account number, license number with NYSE, then there would be extra fees on top of that for a professional user. I think it is about 120 to 140 extra. It's not paid to us. It's paid to the exchanges. The, the $120 per month stays the same for a subscriber to Power Options, but you'd have to pay those extra fees to the exchanges if you were a real-time uh, user and a professional user. Right. Uh, I had another question. Um, you had that tool to uh, look for optimum calls. Do you have a tool, say, if you have a market opinion, say SPX is going to go to this range over this you know, at this date or date range, What uh, searching across multiple strategies, what would be the best strategy or strategies to use? We've been developing uh, something similar to that. Um, we do have a tool right now that kind of allows you to view positions uh, it's called the Search Summary Tool. So if I just said uh, SPX here and I go to Search Summary, the Search Summary Tool allows me to see combinations um, for covered calls, calendar spreads. I can, uh, let's see, if I just select Bearish, for example, uh, and submit that, and I can select the expiration date as well. So this is showing me combinations of what is possible. But as you mentioned, it's not doing that next step, which is in development, is if I put in SPX, and I put in my expectation of the price on a target date where it would show what calls, what calendar spreads, what iron condors, what bull put credit spreads would yield the best theoretical return as well. Oh, yeah, and Jim said professional fees, though those monthly, yeah, those are monthly fees. So in addition, if you were a real-time subscriber and professional to power options, 
the $120 per month for the real-time service to power options, an additional maybe $110, $120 per month the exchanges as a professional trader would be monthly as well. And Jerry had another question earlier. Did you see that? How many time decay lines are available? Yes, and right now, uh, let's go to the, just the profit and loss chart here. Right now, it just shows the one. Now, that's a bad example, the covered call. And let me go to the, uh, sorry, let's go to something more fun. Let's go to that bull put credit we entered. A little bit better view. Uh, so, Jerry, right now, it's just the one. As you originally open a profit and loss chart or you create a custom spread, what it's showing you first, the curve red line, the one curve red line we're showing is at the halfway point. But we can run those what-if scenarios at any time again. Let's say this dropped down to 735 uh, three days from now, two or three days from now. Leave the volatility alone. But then the curve will be redrawn based on that new date we selected, and it'll show you the gain and loss and left. But right now we are just showing the one uh, curved line on the risk-reward graph, the expiration date, and then the halfway point initially, and then it'll change based on whatever date you want to run for your um, – uh, expectations to run your what-if scenarios, Jerry, as well. And can you overlay one trade to another? No, I don't have an overlay feature available. I usually have two or three tabs open when I'm comparing the two positions, and I'll sort of minimize them down and show them next to each other as well. But I don't have an overlay feature on this profit and loss strategy if you're running multiple strategies on a similar stock or uh, two separate stocks, for example. Let's see. I have two more questions before we wrap it up. Um, uh, you have some technical analysis filters. Do you have plans to add more? I know there's some common ones people use, like RSI, that may be missing. Oh, RSI is there. Um, oh, okay. RSI I must have missed is it. There. Let's see. So let's go into the technicals real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry. We have the RSI, number of days to short interest, average broker recommendation. Um, and we added some of the other things, the, the stock trend, number of days up and down, number of days, the 20 days, but over the 50 day, the MACD as well. Um, Williams percent R was asked about uh, within the past couple weeks um, and a couple of others. If uh, you do have uh, requests or ideas of what you'd like to see added to the technicals or fundamentals, we'll look to see if we can add those in. That's how these Bollinger Bands got added in and how the MACD got added in. Ernie was uh, showing the Bollinger Bands and showing ways to trade them, so that's why he added them. And some of the default searches for long calls and other strategies uh, are set up to look for Bollinger Band ranges and Bollinger Bands around earnings. I was the one that kind of pushed for the MACD because I used that with some of my analysis on the married puts and even the uh, uh, bull puts or bear call spreads, as well as the Bollinger Bands in some cases also. Uh, but at any time we get a recommendation or a suggestion from a Power Options member, then we look to see how quickly we can add that in and uh, what changes we might need to make for the technicals or fundamentals as well. And then uh, I know we talked about it a little bit before we started, so people may not have heard it, but uh, I know you do have some plans for adding in the broken link butterfly type of screens, right? And do you have like a we could, maybe an estimated mm -hmm. time when you might have that ready? I don't know. Um, we would have to talk with the programmers. It's on the list. As I mentioned, we were looking at doing the search fields for butterflies and so forth, um, but working more in-depth with your group, as I mentioned, it might be possible to build a one-off screener specifically for the capital discussions group um, that would match more of what you're looking for uh, on the set as well. Um, Jerry, another Jerry, I believe, asked a question, was this modeled after the Optionetics platform? I can say no. Uh, Ernie created this tool back in 1997. I don't think he'd ever seen Optionetics before or even looked at Optionetics. Uh, I know that Option View was doing education back at that time, but I don't even think they had a suite of tools. And one thing we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, one of the original founders of Options Express actually used the original form of Power Options for several months before Options Express was released. So sometimes I get a customer who says, hey, this looks a lot like the uh, output on Options Express, and I know the reason why. <laughs> Well, maybe Option Edics copied you guys. So. <laughs> Hard to say, uh, I right? think they were, they were around about the same time, and I've, I've talked to um, – uh, it was a uh, – I'm sorry, I forget. It was George Fontanelle. Is that correct? He was yeah, the he and Tom Gentile. Tom Gentile, Gentile, right? Tom Gentile yeah. yeah. I've, I've talked to uh, George once or twice via email uh, on different ideas and uh, just different concepts of trading. I think we were, of course, both together. Many of you might recall several years back there was um, – they were doing the uh, Options Expo um, for Options Express, was hosting the Options Expo. 
And of course, you know, we had a booth uh, two away from Option View, and uh, Option NX was down on the other side. And we, all three of us, of course, did a little of the workshop seminars um, that were there as well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I, that I did not know. I did not know he passed away three years ago. That's that's sad to hear. I'm sorry, I did not realize that. That is very sad to hear. Thank you, Jerry, for letting me know that. Um, but yeah, we had a, we had a good time there, and it was always, um, you know, we are in competition with each other, of course, but we're always in comfortable competition. I would never talk bad about anyone who's trying to, uh, you know, enhance education of options trading across the board because I know what I know and then Tom, you know what you know and our education and what we like to do to present to other investors may appeal to some. It may not appeal to others. Everyone has their own risk tolerance and their own strategies they're looking to do. So I'm always learning every day as well as I'm teaching and I'm sure Tom, you are too. So. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I always look at tools to see if there's anything that I can use to improve my trading. And I don't necessarily have to use the whole suite, but if there's one or two things in there that can help me, then I'm more inclined to just go ahead and, and invest in it. Absolutely. I agree. So I think that's it for the question. So, uh, Mike, really appreciate you taking the time today to show us what you've got and uh, that special link for the Capital Discussions members. Uh, I'm sure We'll get some people to check it out and uh, mm -hmm. really uh, look forward to trying out the tool myself and uh, seeing what I can uh, use to improve my trading. All right. That sounds great, Tom. Thank you so much for allowing us to uh, spend time with you today and with the Capital Discussion Group. Uh, after uh, I leave the webinar, of course, what I'll do is email you this link here so you have that if anyone asks for it again, just to powerop.com slash capital. Pretty simple. And when you just go to the main page, uh, you'll just see a field there where you can put in your name and email address and click Start My Trial. And the 14-day trial won't start until you actually log on to the account for the first time. We'll send you a password, and if something comes up and it takes you five or six days to get to it, your trial doesn't start until you first log in. And it's important to note, as you mentioned, um, that everyone who's on the trial will have full use of the tools. And um, the other idea is that everyone who's a trial member or subscriber uh, can schedule a coaching session at any time with either Ernie or myself. And the coaching session is just essentially a 35 to 45 minute phone conversation. We'll walk you through the tools on the site, answer any questions that you have, show you how you might set up the search based on what kind of criteria you're looking for in your strategies, and uh, other discussions as well as far as how to use the tools to implement uh, what you're looking for also. Well, thanks again. And I will put that link uh, next to the recording. I'll also send you a copy of it too if you want to use it for any purpose. Okay. So thanks, thanks again. Every fantastic. Yeah. And thanks everyone for sticking with us to the end. Really appreciate it. And I'll get this recording in our library as soon as I can. So thanks again. And uh, thanks Mike. And let's uh, wrap it up and, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, Tom. Sounds great. We'll talk soon. Take care everyone. All right. You bet. Bye-bye.